At the Royal Scottish Geographical Society, the last 12 months have been amongst our busiest ever. It's been gratifying to have successfully delivered so many projects and events. With over 100 public talks, our highly regarded quarterly magazine, exhibitions, special events, and a quarterly academic journal. We are also increasingly being sought out to convene or contribute to policy for a wide array of organisations, especially on issues to do with the environment and climate change. As one of our partners said recently, for a small charity we punch well above our weight and across a surprisingly broad range of issues and geographical topics. In education, we've helped fly a flag for geographical learning, raising concerns about subject choice in Scottish schools, leading to a recent parliamentary inquiry into the narrowness of the curriculum. We've also published several new lesson plans for teachers, provided inspirational speakers for schools, and are developing a horrible geography of Scotland for use in classrooms next year to inspire the next generation of scientists and big picture thinkers. Policy-wise, we've fed into a remarkable number of government policy fora. For instance, we've helped shape the Scottish Government's recent Arctic policy framework using our international and national connections and supported its consultation and launch events and delivered high quality publications relating to Arctic issues, including both a geographer magazine and a young geographer magazine, the latter of which saw us mentor and train 12 young people and provide them with skills and a platform to voice their concerns. And of course, we've continued to progress and promote solutions-led responses to the climate emergency. We helped inform the Scottish Government's new climate target of net zero emissions by 2045, pushing for greater ambition in emissions cuts and an end to APD tax breaks and a number of other measures. Responding to the school strikes, we hosted a climate summit in Perth with over 30 partner organisations which has informed the programme for government. We are co-chairing an independent inquiry into sustainable agriculture with the National Farmers Union Scotland and Nourish. And perhaps most significantly of all, we've been busy developing an innovative new climate solutions qualification due to roll out in 2020. This programme contains four modules and one workshop and will build your knowledge and skills on how to respond to the most profound challenge faced by managers climate change. We've also had the chance to celebrate the achievements of a remarkable list of local and international practitioners over the past 12 months. Our young geographers travelled overland to Stockholm to present our Geddes Environment Medal to Greta Thunberg for her inspirational impact on climate change awareness. My message to the Scottish Parliament is they need to really get their shit together and start <laughs> doing things. We welcomed the UN Patron of the Oceans, Lewis Pugh, to speak in Perth and presented honorary fellowships to people like the Governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney. Each business uh, is going to need a strategy on how it's going to respond, how it's going to contribute to this transition to net zero carbon economy and how it's going to take advantages of the opportunities. And the founder of Refugee, Selina Hales, as well as of course to the volunteers of the society who are so essential in delivering our charitable work. We've been pleased to strengthen relationships with friends and geographical societies in the UK and across the world, especially in London, Washington, Ottawa and Moscow, and more recently with Outward Bound Oman. It has been a huge challenge to modernise and develop this charity through a decade of austerity. We are very grateful to our members, donors, volunteers and supporters who have backed us through this period. Our SGS is now widely regarded as one of Scotland's most dynamic small charities, and one of the most vibrant geographical societies in the world. With the continued economic uncertainty, we hope we can persuade more of you to join us, to support and to donate to our work. And with the various ambitious initiatives we've got for the next 12 months, and with the United Nations Climate Change Conference COP26 coming to Glasgow in November, the next 12 months promise to be busier than ever. Please support us if you can.